Hello everybody, uh, here is Marco, your traveling futurist, and today I'm gonna have a very, very exciting exploration with my colleague and friend Kevin Mondro, with whom I'm gonna discuss about the future work. Is it becoming more or less human and on what conditions and what are the new ingredients we need to be adding to our workplaces? to actually to make it much more human, much more resilient, much more sustainable. So welcome, Kevin, to, uh, to be part of this discussion. We have had the discussions earlier. I know it's going to be very exciting. Oh, Marku, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited to join you here today. And Marku, I just want to start by saying, hey, you watching, you listening, thank you for joining this conversation because this conversation is about you and it includes you in, in the heart of this conversation. So I'm excited to be here. Yes, very much so. Very much so, Kevin. And, and, and really, all of you guys that are on the line, now or later, you, um, uh, we really wish to you to um, feel good about our conversation, which has been a really uh, not about the question and answer, but really about the conversation. So, uh, Kevin, may, we may start by, uh, uh, by um, telling uh, uh, about you, about what is your background? How did you become so interested about the future <laughs> work and what was your kind of a point of view of entering that discussion? Wow. Uh, thank you, Marku. You know, when I think about that and you start asking about the future of work, I think what interested me about this is all of the bad experiences I've had at work, <laughs> right? I remember my father telling me years ago, right? Son, find work you love doing because you spend most of your waking hours working. And, and if you really want to have right. a good life, a happy life, it, it's got to involve work. And Marku, the experience I observe of most people mm. is work is not a source of joy. Work is a source of misery, of frustration, right? We're recording this on a Monday. Yeah, millions of people went to work today just like, oh, no, it's Monday, right? And I can't wait for Friday. Uh, and let's see if we can persevere this week and how can we get through. And, oh, my gosh, I hope there's a better future of work for us all, right? So for me, I've, I guess I've always had this frustration with work, so I've always been interested in the future of work. But it was just over five years ago now when I started – leaning into gratitude personally and gratitude started mm. making this difference in my life. And it's kind of interesting that we're recording this now because four years ago, this period of time, uh, it was June 17th, 2019, when I had this idea, first time I had this idea of starting something around gratitude. It was host a gratitude challenge. And we hosted mm -hmm. a gratitude challenge we scrambled hard to, to sign up 100 people. Then a friend of mine heard about it, a guy whose work touches the future of work. And in 46 hours, because he tweets about this, 195 additional people join. And, wow. and I never imagined we'd do more than one of these. And we've, it's the work I've done for the past four years. And why is that, Marku? <laughs> right? When I look at that, it's because we started scratching an itch that the world has it, people want to enjoy work I, but i do you believe that that people really want to enjoy work most people don't yeah but given yeah. a choice could i enjoy work or do i have to be miserable at work so i can enjoy the rest of my life what would people choose <laughs> yeah that's uh, that's very uh kind of a uh, funny but also a bit of a tragic way to to, to kind of begin uh, to look at the whole issue because indeed I mean there are lots of statistics uh, and and I of course as a university professor I always go to these statistics and, and there is more than enough to 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 say that yes there is a lot of dissatisfaction a lot of discontent that arises uh, the the frustrations. Uh, that that people feel about their work 
And that really shouldn't be that way. That really yeah. should not be that way. And and then we think about the you know all the centuries I would say now centuries of modernization and 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 technology development and all that has come all the monetization all new ideas about the, how how we build, should build our society and yet there is this huge issue there that hmm yeah we we are in, as you said we're spending the best time of our lives whether we want it or not at least the most part of it we're spending at work so it better be good something good if it's not then something needs to be done and indeed my own work and uh, research about the future of work started from this same realization actually and looking at some of the companies some of the organizations that clearly had a point that they said that, okay, this is enough, as the Spaniards mm. called, basta. <laughs> we need something else. We need, to, we need to organize it in a more human level and uh, the, the way we work, uh, because that's where, where we can start to find that, well, not only what's mm. wrong, but actually what works. Yeah. And, uh, and, and when we think about the future of work, which is a big, big topic now with the AI technology, all of that, and, and with the rapid, rapid changes in our, our environment, then the question becomes, okay, what is our idea of the future of work? What is the kind of the vision? And where have you come with that? What is the, 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 the the kind of attraction point, the vision that you see is clearly that what is it out there in the future that is for us, for the work? Well, Mark, Mark Koo, you know, as I sat with these ideas since we initially talked a few weeks back, and then over the weekend, anticipating this conversation today, I will tell you, some, some thoughts really hit me. And as much as I would like to think that there's there's one view of the future of work. What, what I realized over the weekend, I think, is that we're going to have competing polarities, mm-hmm. and that as much. I mean, we. I think you titled this, entitled this earlier, right? The future of work is it more or less human, right? I think that's the question. I think for millions of people on the planet, the future of work is more human workplaces, more. Uh, bringing more human qualities. And at the same time, I think there's another force that's going to, that that for millions of people, the future of work could be less human. It could be dehumanized even more, right? That it's not like there's, uh, it's over the weekend, I started thinking, why is there such, why do so many people have such a dystopian view? And then I started, what's the opposite of, of dystopian? Hmm. utopian utopia obviously yes <laughs> yeah and then i thought well gosh what if it's not an either or what if the future of work has both of these kind of at the hmm. poles right that there's mm-hmm. some people that are that, that they're pushing technology and ai to advance their view of the world which means less human freedom mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. then my hope and I think what united us in a conversation is we have a hope mm-hmm. that it's going to be yeah. more human. So I don't think it's I don't think it's going to be anytime soon one or the other. I think both are going to be there. Well, I think you're talking about something very fundamental here. It's kind of a well, we kind of know that there exists good and bad in everything actually. And uh, and the future work, of course, it's defined by so many factors. Which some of them are like, "Mm -hmm, yeah, water is very important (laughs) for you. But if you drink too much water, you're going to (laughs) die. But that happens seldom, of course. More you would probably (laughs) uh, uh, die because you don't drink enough water. But but, uh, but so there is is not a kind of a... I I think what you're trying to say is that there is not a kind of a perfect one way of doing things. There is always a, a, a constellation of different elements. And it's more question of the balance. It's more question of, a, and the balance have to be positive in the sense that you feel kind of that you as a human being, for whatever experience and skills you have, you are able to contribute. 
because this is what we are here for. Uh, and if you are not able to do that for some reason, there is a boss who says, "No, no, no, you don't should not do this. You should do that," or, 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 or simply you are, you are kind of a devaluated as a as a as a robot of a kind, kind or uh, you simply don't feel that you have a kind of a space and a freedom. Mm to do what you as a human being mm. want to do. That's the moment when you are yeah. raised. And that's the moment mm. when we need to start to be asking questions that, hey, come on, uh, yeah. this should be done in a very different way. What do you think? Oh, I, I love what you just said. You used one of my favorite words, contribute. There are a few. And so are we using technology to, in the future of work, to make it more possible for humans to make their human contribution, their unique contribution. And, and those companies that use technology to automate some of the most mundane tasks of the work, the most repetitive tasks, what if, what if by automating those, we're freeing up our people to do what only our people can do, to bring contributions that only they can bring, mm -hmm. that machine learning can't replicate, that human creativity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But if we're using technology to eliminate people, right? Mm -hmm. not, not to free people, not to liberate mm -hmm. people, but to mm -hmm. eliminate people. Mm -hmm. uh, and that we, if we think that we're going to have... Uh, a flourishing company totally run by robots. To me, that is a very dystopian view of the future. <laughs> so I want to ask this. I love the, uh, so first off, I love your work as a futurist, right? That you have this different lens through which you see the world in this dis different discipline. And I love that the future of work is something that you're passionate about. But as we talk about that, Mark, mm. mm. what you said, contribution. I believe mm -hmm. everybody wants to make a contribution. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what are some of the other things that are fundamental to us flourishing as humans, right? We want to mm. contribute. I, yeah. I think another one is we want to be valued, recognized, and appreciated for absolutely. that contribution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are, you're absolutely right. So it's, it, it's, it's not enough that we contribute. But we need to get the feeling back. We need to get the feedback that what we're contributing is valued and is something that is appreciated. Um, and and that brings us actually to 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 to, to define about the, this kind of a key elements in the future of work. So if you if you see that, yeah, well, this is. We want to inject something in there, you know, like <laughs> the, the system. You know, what do we want to inject, you know? And that's the, and that's exactly this, um, this, this mm. flow, uh, because the more, I mean, the more we mechanize in a way uh, the human interaction, uh, the less we have those human qualities. And as you said yeah. rightly. There's so much of the stuff that we want to get rid of and the machines can well do that. And increasingly so actually, when you think about the, 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 the development of the AI, but, but then there is this kind of a unique human side of the story. And we humans, uh, we look actually in this life more and more, I believe very strongly, not just to kind of uh, cater for our basic needs, but to go actually beyond that. Mm. We mm. need to be catered for that. There's no question about that. But after that is we can't just keep on having more because there's just certain amount of the food that <laughs> we can eat a day and, and, and money we can use or so whatever. It's, it, it, there is a limit. So then we need to go to the next step. Okay, what other needs yeah. there are yeah. for us yeah. to live a satisfactory yeah. life? And that is exactly coming to this point that, well, we need to experience that in work. It's not enough if we have a fine home and fine family and all that. No, we also need to be experiencing that very human quality in our work. And the technology itself is a neutral here. I mean, it can do good or bad for this kind of a empowering these human qualities in the, in the workplace. 
But what from your perspective mm. is <laughs> the trigger here, so to say? <laughs> oh, so uh, a moment ago you asked what could we inject, right? I, I mm. love that idea. And, and if I could inject one thing, right, if I could inject one thing, uh, now the outcome, you also were asking this, what is it that we mm. really want? I think we want human flourishing, right? I love that word that maybe got amplified through the world of positive psychology, flourishing, mm -hmm. but, we, but, mm -hmm. but for people to flourish and thrive. Well, what is one thing to inject that helps that? It's gratitude. Is mm -hmm. one of the gratitude. This, you know, so, so many workplaces of the world right now spend millions of dollars annually on employee recognition and appreciation. But one of the things that we, we've kind of done poorly is we've so automated so much of that recognition and appreciation. We've systematized it to what are we what are we appreciating? Well, we're appreciating that you've been with us for one year or we're recognizing your five year service anniversary or your 10 year mm -hmm. or 25 mm -hmm. year. And here's mm -hmm. a watch. Right? But we're not going back to the word you used earlier. We're not mm -hmm. really recognizing you for your contributions in mm -hmm. that time. We're just celebrating mm. a milestone. We're saying, mm. you know, you've, mm. you, you have <laughs> persevered and continue mm. to show up mm. at this job mm. every mm. day or almost every day for five years, yeah. 10 years, 25 years. Here's an award. Well, what if we mm. flip that instead and we started mm -hmm. inviting people to go, well, what is the unique contribution? Marku or Mary, or mm. William, right, or uh, mm -hmm. Jose brings to this job that no one else mm. in the department brings to this mm. job the way they bring to the job. Let's yeah. express gratitude and appreciation for their mm -hmm. unique personality, their unique contribution. Let's celebrate yeah. that. Now, That's all of a, a very, sudden, those yeah. those celebrations would be lively. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's very that's that's very nice because actually you you explain in a in a in a very good way uh, about your approach, which is which you which brought you actually into part of this discussion, uh, namely the issue about the gratitude and uh, and I, I I love the way that you um you you said it in this way that the that the the gratitude the way we need to be sort of using the gratitude is that we recognize the unique contribution of the other people. And we need to do that in the, on the human level, uh, and not as if we are kind of a feeding in the, the, the usual stuff that as said, you know, recognition of this and that, but the recognition of the, of the quality of the, of the contribution that people have made. And, and that is a hugely interesting topic. It goes beyond uh, the most of what has been talked about, you know, remuneration of the employees and of, 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 of different kinds and that, which has become, become a kind of a standard way of, of looking at that. But this goes far beyond. So I want to ask you, what has been uh, the feedback that you get now that you have been talking to to many many companies about this and and kind of a checking them that hey is there a point of view that you have probably missed a little bit while you're thinking about how to be more yeah. fair and mm. equitable and uh, and and recognizing uh, the contributions of the employees mm. Yes. So I, I'm, I'm thinking of some of those conversations. I'm thinking of, of a company that everybody here would know if I named their name. What they said is we hire the smartest people in our field on the planet, right? We have people who mm. are the most intelligent about their work. And now we are aspiring to elevate their emotional intelligence so that it is at the level of their 
other intelligence, right? Their, their subject area intelligence, their IQ, uh, just mm -hmm. their level of smartness. What if they could be almost as smart about dealing with people as they are about whatever their subject matter of expertise is? And, and so that's one of the things I, I, I think about when you say that. I think, wow, I, I hope, I believe and I started reflecting on this since we first talked. I mean, you know, we've already made some great progress towards a new future of work, a more human future of work. I mean, there are a lot mm -hmm. of companies. You, you, you brought some of those to the table. Was it Patagonia, the first mm -hmm. one that no. really caught your, that activated your imagination about yeah. what's possible, right? I mean, there are literally thousands of these companies now that are doing things so well. And, you know, and I look at three and a half years ago or however long ago it was, and I was trying to do the math. It's, yeah, we're, we're in the fourth year since the world dramatically mm -hmm. changed, right? And yeah. I think one of the things that we've seen when we had the great resignation and, you know, whatever labels people used, I, I think part of that was a reaction to these dehumanized workplaces, that people just came to this, came to the awareness that enough is enough and that uh -huh. life is more than the things you mentioned earlier. There's more to life than paychecks. There's more to life uh -huh. than having a, a nice home, right? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. we want to have homes. Yes, we want, and we want people around the world to have living wages, right? This isn't just... I don't believe flourishing at work is just for the elite. Mm -hmm. I, I want to Plus, see all seeing. humans be able to flourish in their work, whatever that mm -hmm. work is, right? To be recognized, celebrated, appreciated mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. who they are, for what they bring. So I think that, you know, part of this is, okay, so let's just, there's a response and there's a reaction and there's a resistance. I, I don't even know if I've ever thought of those three words before in the same <laughs> sentence. But when, when you ask this question, mm -hmm. so companies, mm -hmm. there's some companies in the world that are resisting the move to be more human mm -hmm. and to have more human centric workplaces. There's some that are reacting to those desires. And then the ones that we admire, the, 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 the forerunners are those who are responding. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's mm -hmm. probably this fourth category. There's some of these amazing companies that saw it coming and cre moved before they had to move, like, like Patagonia. They started mm -hmm. creating this before their workforce was demanding it or requesting it, right? They saw yeah. it in advance and they said, wow, we want we, – there are things we could do better. There are things that we could change to have more equitable workplaces, Absolutely. to have more enjoyable workplaces. Let's do that. And then mm -hmm. others, mm -hmm. it's when people started saying, hey, if you don't change this, I'm leaving. So they began responding. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, just look I... at work from home initiatives right now. <laughs> there were so many companies mm -hmm. that just put down the law. you got to return to work. Why? Yeah. I, because we pay for an office, so you have mm -hmm. to return to work. Am I more productive if I return to work? Well, not necessarily, mm -hmm. but we're paying mm -hmm. for an office. So you have mm -hmm. to return to work for the mm -hmm. sole reason that we pay for you a desk at the work. <laughs> and now that's yeah. being rethought by a lot of companies. Going, well, maybe, 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 you, maybe you can continue to work from home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, and I think, I think there is... Um... A great deal when we think about this kind of a turn that we are what we are seeing now here there is the um it's really ultimately a question about the the leadership and leadership in mm -hmm. a such a way that we think about that there is the uh uh, uh not that 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 we need leaders in the in the old sense of the world kind of a kind of a leader of the pack kind of a thing no 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 mm -hmm. We need a leadership culture that enables that. This is, of course, always done by the agents. I mean, namely human beings. But, but, uh, and, and, and then, because uh. there are those that are pioneers, and like a Patagonia guy, the uh, and and the family that just built it up, it came naturally for them. So they they were like that 
in the beginning and of course then they yeah. develop that over the time but most of most of the companies of course do not have uh, such a start or such a, so they need to be kind of a consciously led to that yeah. type of policies and strategies and that takes uh, that takes an, a real effort because first of all there needs to be awareness and the consciousness among the top management of the company that's one thing but secondly, they also need to have a kind of a way to approach this in a, in a kind of a tangible and concrete manner so that it's not just that mm, something is wrong. Yes, I know. I know people are frustrated, but, but what to do? I don't know what to do. I know mm. this is the way that I've been running this for 30 years. I, I don't know. So <laughs> then you need this kind of a impulse coming from somewhere that, hey, yeah, but there is an alternative, mm. and the alternative is this, and so uh, and, and 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 but but nothing happens, uh. and this is you know I, I, I've seen it from my part, my work, way over the 20, 20 30 years with the companies that yes, unless mm. there is a seriously and leadership that has has committed yeah. to this type of type of turn and change and really are seeking seriously about the alternatives and the ways that this this can be manifested that's that's not going to happen so and it's a lot as everything with a culture in the organization because this is about the culture at the end of the day it's a, it's not happening overnight it's it's a it no. always takes a bit of time to change that so, which you have probably seen i heard two two or three words that i i kind of just zeroed in on in mm -hmm. your remarks there. One, you talked about this awareness, and then you talked about a leadership consciousness. Hmm. So I'm wondering, Marku, as I listen to that, is there an awakening that starts that journey in a leader? Hmm. Right? There's, there's this awakening as the leader. Uh, because, I mean, let's face it, a lot of us inherited a view of the world, a way of work that was passed down to us, right? And, and it's easy to just go, okay, so this is the way it's always been. This is the way it's got to be. But then mm. as, as there is an awakening, here's what I've discovered in my own awakenings. In an awakening, what do we start asking? We, we start asking is, well, why? Why have we always done it this way? Is there another way that we could do this? Is there a better way that we could do this? Right. That's that's that awakening, I believe, sparks the awareness journey. Mm -hmm. And then as we sit in that awareness, I believe it leads to this new consciousness. So mm -hmm. I started reading a book. It's an 11 year old book. I, I just stumbled on it in some kind of search the other day, ordered it. It arrived Saturday. Uh, we had a busy weekend, so I picked it up, and I'm just going to read a couple of sentences out of the foreword, just the foreword. Yeah, and these were book, written yeah. by, do you know the company Trader Joe's? I know it's a largely yes, in America. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surely. Okay, so this is written by the president, the past president of Trader Joe's that led the growth from uh, – Starting with a handful of stores to more than 325 stores in 26 states under his leadership. Doug Roush. Amazing. Amazing. A culture of grateful leadership starts with leaders who are inspired by a profound sense of personal gratitude. They are also acutely conscious. When you said that word conscious a moment, that, that's what mm -hmm. sparked this mm -hmm. back. Conscious. Mm -hmm of how an attitude of appreciation affects both employees and the community at large. Mm -hmm. If the expression of gratitude is contrived, the result is uninspired. And then a, a couple of lines later, without the authentic expression of gratitude, people become frustrated and lose sight of the larger purpose. But then this was this was the line when I read this. I thought, oh, my gosh, if this comes up in our conversation, I'm bringing it. <laughs> the culture of gratitude is drawing corporations out of the vortex of selfishness and mm. into the interconnected web of humanity. Wow. Right? Wow. Yeah. Wow. 
fun. To and me. that's that's one of the things that's that's the shift. The shift mm-hmm. that that we are no longer an island. Our little company, however big mm-hmm. our company is, we're not mm-hmm. an island. And mm-hmm. people are not islands. Marku, you and I both mm-hmm. remember. We remember that the time of work when the mm-hmm. ethos of work was this silly mantra now that what mm. happens at home stays at home and when you come to work don't bring that stuff with you <laughs> really really yeah right? yeah that's so absurd yeah it, it, it is it's absurd to think that if somebody's a family member just received this serious health diagnosis mm. that they can mm. show up at work and do their mm. job as normal without <laughs> and just kind of park all of that emotional weight <laughs> that baggage that they're carrying that's really real right and what if instead we create workplaces of compassion workplaces of empathy and <laughs> understanding <laughs> and and <laughs> somebody goes wow <laughs> it looks <laughs> like you're carrying something today <laughs> right yeah is there something yeah. weighing on you that we could help with? Mm-hmm. This is something, you know, you said such an important uh, word here, uh, which is the empathy. And it, it's a funny, you know, if you think about the, 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 the core of the empathy, the core of the empathy is something like this. Uh, you are able to be empathetic when you are able to move the other one's shoes and seize the things from her or his perspective. That's how we can sort of define. And and simple as it sounds, wow, we human beings are so often into ourselves, almost, you know, incapable of 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 doing that 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 real trick of of moving to the shoes of the other so uh, and that is because we sort of uh, we are not i'm I'm not saying how we are born but we are certainly educated with the idea of the mind that we focus on ourselves (laughs) and we build ourselves and we uh, and we take care of ourselves and we move ourselves we develop and uh, and we do everything we do in the world is because it comes something for us, and so, so this kind of a um, um, a way of looking at our own interest in everything, and that and, that line, and, the vortex of selfishness. Yeah, yeah right? the I vortex mean... of selfishness. I remember you say that. That's exactly the point, and and that is what we have been kind of a perpetuating in 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 our working life and and that is exactly the continuation of everything else so it kind of a false natural and now we need to kind of revolutionize that we need to make this kind of what we in the science we call the copernican revolution which is that we turn things upside down basically and say it's not well if we're always thinking about ourselves, our good, our company's good, our benefit, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, we need to do that. Yes, yes, no doubt about that. But if that is our sole focus, then we just simply miss the other. Yeah. And with the other, we not only miss that that it's kind of a left aside, but we also miss all the positive that might come from there because, or we miss the most of it at least. And, and so it's also the way that to see that, well, everything we kind of send out actually by the law of nature comes back. This is the mm. system, how the systems work. There's always feedback loop. But whether this is a negative or positive feedback loop, that's the, that, that is what is at, at question. Mm. And, uh, and we really learn not to care too much about how this becomes positive because the, the moment that you can show empathy, the moment... Mm. Mm. you start to create a positive feedback. So, Marku, whether we're talking about empathy um, Mm. or whether we're talking about kindness, whether we're talking about compassion, all of these desirable attributes of leaders and workplaces and communities, right? One of the things that I've just observed in the last, I guess, three years is when I really started noticing this. They all 
grow in the good soil of gratitude. So when hmm. when we when we interject or yeah infuse and inject and interject gratitude into our lifestyle, into our leadership, into our companies, into our cultures. I guess the word I came to love and appreciate gratitude is a catalyst, right? And a catalyst is, mm-hmm. is an element that causes other elements to happen more quickly or expand bigger than they would on their own. And the best part about a catalyst is the catalyst is not consumed in the process, Mm -hmm. right? The catalyst is still there. So when we embrace gratitude, when we begin to interject gratitude into our lifestyle, into our leadership, Mm. other things come with it. Mm. And the gratitude continues. Right. It's not wow. like you, you're being grateful and now all of a sudden you've, you've got kindness and empathy. Mm-hmm. So you're no longer grateful. No, you continue to be <laughs> grateful. Gratitude has this catalytic effect and it keeps ah. growing gratitude and it brings other things. Gratitude never travels alone. When you mm-hmm. when you express and embrace gratitude, other good things come as part of the package. Always. Wow. 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 <laughs> Because what you're now, <laughs> now what you were saying, just Kevin, was so important that I I'm always I'm I'm blown out because <laughs> what you're saying is something actually something very concrete. You say what are the benefits, and 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 understanding also the benefits of the gratitude. Uh, to yourself as a human mm. being, to your environment, and also to what are the business you are you are actually doing. Yeah. Once you start to really to understand what this additional injection actually makes it, so that uh, as you said, there is uh, the feedback, and I always mm. love this idea that you know the more you give you. The, the more you get because it's it's the, how any system any human system actually any living system works in that way and so uh, so we need to see that from that very mm. perspective and that is actually where it gets very interesting i guess to any of the business leader as well because suddenly yeah. this becomes like wow yeah i mean you know we can get so much more resolved you can get a better margin whatever you want but this 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 comes a very tangible and and that's what i love about it because it's it's actually when you say the word gratitude it's almost like okay this is a very high level stuff this is all like a spiritual uh word but then you actually when you kind of uh, pin it down to something yeah. that really has an impact in yeah. our everyday life, in the work of the company, in the results of the company, then you start to go, wow, yeah, there, there is, a, of course, there is a connection, but we, we, we often fail to see that. So you have certainly mm. had some interesting experiences of this, that suddenly the, when, the, when, the, when the leaders of the company start to realize, yeah, mm, yeah, this yeah. is not just that, you know, becoming a better, better people, which is, of course, important as well, but actually... There is something much more that that we can receive yeah. with that. So, absolutely. And I would never, and I'm, you're not suggesting this. I'm just saying I would never say be grateful to manipulate a result. Right? That's not <laughs> what we're talking about. We'd never say that. But what we're saying is when you are grateful, there are results. Right? And, and you, you mm. may not be ex- exercising, embracing, expressing gratitude to get a result. But when you do, there is a result. It's like uh, Robert Caldini, who wrote the book Influence, and the, 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 a, a professor at, uh, I believe, the University of Arizona, uh, studied influence and the seven principles of influence. And one of those is reciprocity. Right. And we know this when you do something good for someone else, they they are often inclined to do something in return. So a lot of companies, 
practice some reciprocal marketing to manipulate people. That's not what we're talking about here. But what we're talking about there is a boomerang effect of gratitude. When you express gratitude, people will respond. M more often than not, people will begin expressing gratitude back to you. But let's go into the workplace. When, mm -hmm. Because I believe, we, we used this phrase earlier, that they're basic human desires. They're basic human desires. Every employee that goes to work today is at work today wonders, do I matter? Right? Am mm -hmm. I seen, heard, valued, and appreciated? And when that when they aren't, and when they go long enough without being assured that they are seen, heard, valued, and appreciated, they begin to disengage in work. Maybe, maybe at first it's subconsciously, right? They're, they're just like, eh, what's it matter? You know, mm -hmm. if, does it mm -hmm. really matter if I if I just go the extra mile? And then maybe it becomes conscious, right? And, and when you look at Gallup's work, we have high numbers of people that are disengaged and you have like 14% of people who are actively disengaged that are actually working to sabotage the company. They're so disengaged, right? right? I mean, they're, they're just mad now. It's not like the, they want to see the company hurt because they are hurting because no one has seen valued or appreciated them. So when we begin to do this, when, when you as a leader embrace and express gratitude, you are activating systems uh, in the, when the, in, in the neurological wiring of your people, you are activating a system and they want to do their best. They now mm -hmm. want to go the extra mile. They want right. to do more than is expected. And it's not that you've done it to manipulate them, but but mm -hmm. you're firing them and not but you're yeah. you're firing neurons in their brains <laughs> and in their bodies. And it, you know, and back to this feedback system. We're getting yeah. a positive feedback loop in our brains and yeah. in our bodies. When I go the extra mile, I receive appreciation that makes me feel good about the work I did. Now, what do I want to do? I want to do more of that. I want to keep <laughs> doing that because I've, I've now activated this feedback loop in my body, you know, of oxytocin yeah. and serotonin. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, Whoa. Yeah, yeah, you know, I just got yeah. a, I just got a rush of endorphins because hmm. my, my leader, my boss praised me for work <laughs> I've done that no one ever noticed before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we, yeah, so because now we're really talking about uh, the way that we can make this as a practice uh, within the organization and, 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 and see the results. So I, I think, you know, uh, it is a, it is a great thing to think about that oh. it's ultimately it's nothing really big. It's more like a, a lot of small steps. Oh, and, I'm so glad and, you said that. Hmm. I, I, and those those small steps together have yes. this enormous impact on people. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And it yeah. is. It's a lot of little things. And, yeah. and for leaders who go, oh, it's just a little thing, right? Hmm. We'll just give them a bonus at the end of the year. <laughs> Well, yeah. 52 weeks of not being noticed is not going to be made up with one bonus. <laughs> and, and so there was a study done, a global study. 80% of leaders felt they did a great job of recognizing their people. In those same companies, only 40% of people even felt they'd been recognized by a leader, <laughs> right? I mean, it's kind of like, well, and, and when people are asked how, okay, mm. okay um, mm -hmm. are you in a romantic, have you ever been in a romantic relationship? Or are you married? Right. Did you tell your wife, I love you on the day you got married and you're just good for the rest of your life. <laughs> hey honey, I told you 25 years ago when we got married, I love you. You don't need me to tell you that again. That's the, that's, that's what they, some people joke because we are not known to talk much in Finland. That's what the many people say that this is exactly what we do. You know, we say, okay, you know, 
I already said when we were married, so I don't have to repeat that thing. You know that, you know. I will I will let you know when things change. <laughs> So, I mean, that's that's how yeah. employers yeah. are. Hey, I, I, I pay you every two weeks or once a month, however frequently right. we pay yeah. you. You should know I appreciate you. Employees, yeah. if if yeah. an employee hears, hey, mm. you did a great job. What you just did mm. was amazing. Thank you for doing that. If mm -hmm. they hear mm -hmm. that once a week, mm -hmm. it is not too often. No. Yeah. Once yeah. a week yeah, is a really good cadence of of mm -hmm. people uh, of it staying in their memory. Hey, I, I felt I felt really good about something I did this week at work. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And leaders go, well, gosh, we give an employee of the year award mm -hmm. every year. People get nominated. We even recognize those nominees that don't mm -hmm. receive the award. Right. The, or we do it twice a year or we do it once a quarter. Yeah. Hey, mm -hmm. what what about just saying to somebody, I saw yeah. what you did. Yeah. Thank you for going the extra mm. mile. You mm. thank you mm. for for mm. thank you for persevering when it would have been easier to quit, right? Thank <laughs> you for whatever that is. That mm. little mm. it's a little thing, Marku, to your word. Yeah. It's a little yeah, thing, absolutely, but, but makes a big difference. It's Okay, so Marku, we're talking about automating, right? And and one of the things or, or the potential of automation and future of work and yeah. all of this. So sometimes I'm talking to leaders and they go, oh, I should be more grateful. I get it, Kevin. Okay, I'm going to automate my gratitude. <laughs> I'm mm. like, no, 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 don't automate <laughs> gratitude. So what do, we, what do you mean? There's this thing called the email auto signature, right? You, you can set this up once and now all of a sudden it's just set. It's going to run. So I'm just going to put with gratitude or gratefully at the bottom of my email signature because I want everybody to know I'm grateful for them. I say, no, 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 don't ever do that. Please don't do that. <laughs> Gratitude is not something you want to automate. It's something you want to prioritize. It's something you want to activate. But here, here is my counsel. I mean, when I'm coaching leaders, here's what I tell them. Would you take an extra three seconds with that email and, and just pause a moment and think about what is it about this person that I'm grateful and then sign your email with fresh gratitude, right? Don't go, hmm. you know, just automate. It's now just gratefully. It's just like, hey, I appreciate you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for you. Whatever that is. Mm -hmm. It, it mm -hmm. takes a few extra seconds. Mm -hmm. But Marco, it's just one of those things. I, this hit yeah. me a couple of years ago because I think I had probably set an automated mm -hmm. signature at some point. And I'm mm -hmm. like, that's not what I want to do. <laughs> right. I want to I want to make it real every time I'm signing mm -hmm. off an email and just yeah. just take a second and write and just pause a moment and think about this person. Now, maybe mm -hmm. it becomes a little longer. Right. Mm -hmm. Hey, I know you're going through some stuff. Thanks for. Thanks for mm. sticking with us or something, whatever that is, mm -hmm. or if it's just gratefully mm -hmm. or with gratitude, but don't mm -hmm. automate it. It's too important mm -hmm. to automate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I, I, when, when you were telling this, um, uh, I, I, I thought that yes, exactly. And why is it impossible to automate? It is impossible to automate because it's a very human quality that you need to be expressing and human cap quality is not about the repetition it is about as you said it's about prioritizing something and and show it and that is not something that you can express in uh, in you know in the in the automated messages so much so it, because it becomes like a politician speech you know you are and and you don't get the feeling that even if it says thousand times gratitude it doesn't you don't get the feeling of that because it's a feel and and it, uh, feelings and emotions talk to us actually in most of the cases much stronger than yeah. than than the kind of a the more on the kind of a thinking processes so so this emotional aspect of the gratitude is is very important here because it really speaks to our heart it really speaks mm. you have earlier mentioned about the emotional intelligence yes it is all about that area which is huge but actually which which really ignite us as human beings once we get something kind of a 
we get a food there you know it it is it it, it creates so much of the energy we so and and when yeah. there is something that we want to you know stay apart or we fear what happens our mm. energy goes down yeah so yeah. Uh, so so that's how it we should be seeing that uh so it's a kind of an energizing factor and again this is. goes back to how you use it but also how you can misuse it in a way and, so, and you, you put it in a very nice way i love that you use the word feel and feeling because i was thinking about that earlier wanting to make sure we talked about that I can't even tell you how many times just in the last month that I've read different things that talk about when employees feel appreciated, not when they think they're appreciated, not when they they have a uh, a certificate that says you're appreciated, but when they <laughs> feel appreciated, mm. right? Mm. That's when people do extraordinary things. It's in a response to that feeling to that I feel appreciated. And so and then I, I, I remembered that word that I read in that sentence uh, from Doug with without the authentic expression of grat well, no what wrong word. If the expression of gratitude is contrived, hmm. the result is uninspired. Hmm. Right. Yeah. If it's contrived, if you're just saying you're grateful because you feel obligated to say thank you, it doesn't mean anything or it means very little. Right. If, if yeah, you're just you, trying to work it and up, you feel it. Yeah. The you point feel is it. You feel it. Yeah. <laughs> you feel it's insincere and you go, eh, mm. they didn't really mean it. Mm -hmm. But when mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. feel that this person mm -hmm. really appreciates me, mm -hmm. you, you are then energized. The, the next mm -hmm. word you use, you're mm -hmm. energized mm -hmm. to give more, to give your best, to, to mm -hmm. shine. So I, I just love mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. love all of those specific words that have found their way into this conversation, right. Marco. Okay, I want to bring um, the um, the the a bit of a different kind of um, a viewpoint to all of this discussion, which has been so exciting. And it's about uh, what we actually started with. We started to talk about also about the role of the technology. And yes, indeed, there is a more and more more and more immersive technologies mm -hmm. that are there. And um, and then then again, uh, there is this clearly this notion that um, we this is exactly what we need this 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 emotional aspect of the mm. gratitude that builds the human kind of a uh, feel that you are doing something right and you are appreciated by that. Mm. Uh, because mm. even if you get the feedback that is critical, but it's still empathetic feedback, it's it's of course it's it's it, it, it's good, it's positive. That's how we learn as human beings. But but when we when we think about that, uh, we are moving in a very very fast speed into the era where there is so much uh, automation happening. Uh, you see the AI is almost like, a, okay, you know, more complexity, more mm. uncertainty in the world, uh, more to understand, more to cope mm. with. This is uh, more surprises to come, as we have seen in the last years. Mm. All mm. of that is coming. Mm. And actually, technology can take care of some of that. Sort of, it's kind of a... It's kind of a complexity management in a way. Hmm. And AI can do a lot of good things in there. Now, and we need to use that technology for that good because then we can have more time yeah. to that aspect that we have been talking all along here, which is that we need to build this kind of a human basis for the organization to flourish. Because that's the only way that you can ultimately mm. make sure that there is a certain sort of a viability. Because there is so much other things that can happen in the organization and with the products and the services and the customers and all that. Uh, but if you apply 
the technology with this kind of a top notch and you make it really brilliant. While at the same time, you say that, well, now we do this also because we can then focus more on this, what actually make us not just the robots, but the human mm. company. Isn't that then the kind of a, the, the mm. promise, the utopia that you mentioned, isn't that the promise that we can, so that ultimately more and more we can get all these mundane mm. things and tasks to, 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 be, mm. to be worked out by the technology, then we last, at last have this chance to focus something which truly inspire us as human beings which is to build uh, a human community, whether it's in the yeah. workplace, whether it's at home, whether it's in uh, uh, whatever yeah. uh, association we work for and so forth. So, so this is the promise, isn't it? It is the promise. It is the, pro and I'm going to use another word. And as, as I was listening to you, I remember in that earlier conversation we had when, when I used a word, how it activated and energized you. I would say this just isn't the promise, Marku. This is the hope that we have mm. for the future of work, mm -hmm. right? This mm -hmm. is the hope we have. And, and one of the things that excites me, I, I think one of the first things I learned that really drew me into gratitude was the connection between gratitude and hope. Mm. Gratitude, hope is cultivated in gratitude or gratitude grows hope, right? When we're expressing gratitude, we are increasing our hope uh, and we are increasing the hope of others. And and hope is a powerful word. I mean, you and I, we, we talked about this before. So I would say this just isn't the promise of the future. This is our hope mm -hmm. for the future. <laughs> this is yeah. what we hope for. And, and, and hope keeps us going. Hope inspires us right I, I can't go a day without hope right i mean hmm. there there's nothing worse than feeling utterly hopeless hmm. and yeah, and so sure. i read something i was doing studies on hope a couple of weeks ago reading several articles and one of the definitions that the distinction between optimism and hope Optimi we, we can be optimistic about the future, and that's just this belief that things are going to get better. Mm -hmm. Hope. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tie back one of the earlier words you, you used. Let me, let me just pause a moment and think how to best do this, and you don't have to mm -hmm. edit this out. No, let's just keep this real-time <laughs> pause in here. Yeah, um, no worries. What gives us what, – what creates hope? is the belief that we have a personal contribution that makes a difference, right? Optimism is this belief that things are just going to turn out okay. Hope is a requirement that there's something I can do that makes it better, mm -hmm. right? That I have wow. a contribution to the situation that improves the outcome. Right. Yeah. Oh, so that's why, yeah, this that's, is impo this is important, right? That, and it, we're going yeah, back to absolutely. this contribution. What you do matters. What you bring to your workplace, and what I would say is this: you don't have to be the CEO or the C anything to contribute to the well-being of your team, right? Mm. Everybody, when you see someone else on your team doing something that you appreciate something that makes life better for you and your colleagues, you can be the one to call it out and to mm. elevate and celebrate the uh, contribution of a peer. And that means as much, and in some cases more to them than the distant CEO recognizing them, that Absolutely. a peer appreciated yeah. me, that a peer <laughs> expressed gratitude for my contribution. So this idea of contribution yeah. is really important. And everyone watching this, everyone listening to mm. this has mm. a contribution that we need to get to the future of work that mm -hmm. we all mm -hmm. aspire and desire to. So will you make your contribution? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> I think what you did, Chess, that um, you gave a wonderful definition of the hope and the connection of the hope and gratitude. So they are kind of a mm. 
entangled. They are, they are kind they of, are. A, yeah. they are kind of, a, they are together. I can say that better, but they really are together. And it's very interesting to see that, that, uh, that they kind of, how they propel each other. So, uh, which is not what we always think of. This is yeah. a, this I would say is almost like a revolutionary idea. But when we start to mm. think and contemplate and act on that, we see that, oh yeah, actually that makes a lot of sense. I look at our lives, you know, how, how, yeah. how this has happened time and again, that particularly when we are about to lose our hope and then somebody shows that hey marco you are you're not a hopeless guy that you think now that you, you have done something good right there and here and and we actually we need you and we need to do, to do this and that and we really yeah. like you around but if there is an environment nobody's saying to me i'm i'm a marco i'm in a kind of a lost space nobody's saying any of that well then i get kind of a deeper and deeper but you need just know some some policy impulses coming from outside saying telling to you that actually your life has a meaning because this is what it's all about yeah because if you if you feel that your life yeah. has no meaning then you cannot be kind of a grateful for anything almost like so but this gratitude that is expressed in these human terms just mm. wakes up in you yes i'm mm. always important to somebody mm. And, and that is that is the great and if you can kind of uh, collectivize that and uh, because each of us is mm. is 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 important in their own ways contribute in their unique ways so that that is what is built there and that is ultimately that yeah makes this connection about the hope between the hope and gratitude so important so that was a wonderful yeah. kind of wow. a <laughs> kind of a distillation, crystallization <laughs> of uh, of the, our conversation mm. this time. And there is so much more that we can tap on it, but uh, but uh, uh, but uh, but I think that we we get this kind of a, I guess um, a, a really nice overview of the of the whole issue of why mm. gratitude is so important. Important. It is important mm. because that exactly explains why the human mm. aspect of the future of work, the whole topic around mm. that, is paramount. It's something that we need to be looking at much more closely yeah. as we move forward. Wow, Kevin, mm. isn't that something? Oh, Marco, so I want to express gratitude. I want to express gratitude to you for, for inviting me into this conversation. For and I'm going to express gratitude for you becoming my new friend from Finland, right? And and th that there's more work for us to do together to grow hope, to spread gratitude, uh, and, and to create better, brighter visions of the future of work. So thank you. Wow, Kevin, thank you. I'm so grateful to have you uh, uh, in this in this session and, and have met you earlier and all of this. Uh, that is so inspirational for me, truly. And, and, and hope it is also very inspirational to many of our, our uh, 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 people around to, to listen or watch this. And, uh, and we're going to move forward with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, topics related i really look forward to that but at this point yeah. just so much thank you uh kevin to participate in this and and bringing this brilliant topic into into the forum of, oh, of thank of you our podcast thank you thank you <laughs> deep so. deep gratitude and to you that are watching you that are listening you know we we want to know how does this resonate with you and what is a question or a concern you have about the future of work and how you see your journey what's the what's the possibilities for your workplace becoming more human centric we would love to hear from you because we want to have more conversations along this theme and we want it to include your voice in the conversation. Absolutely. Yes. You are speaking for the both of us. So thank you, Kevin, for bringing this up. Really, we really hope that all of you 
who are listening that please bring your views, your topic, your ideas, your criticism, whatever it is. We would really like to hear about it as we want to move forward with this topic and, and bring it to as, as many as possible kind of a, um, uh, audiences and, uh, and, and really develop the kind of a com community to, to mm. talk about this. Uh, this this crucially important issue about the gratitude mm. and work. So, Kevin, um, uh, how people can reach you and see more of your stuff that you're working? Can you please uh, give the details of of how to how to get connected to your stuff? I'd love for you to reach out and connect with me. If you are on LinkedIn, LinkedIn is. Uh, One of the two social media I use most, I'm just Kevin Monroe, Kevin Monroe at LinkedIn. On Twitter, it's Kevin underscore Monroe. I, those are the two social media I'm most active on. And then website, KevinDMonroe.com. You can reach me at any of those places. Let me know that you watched this show and we'll continue the conversation. Marku, thank you again for inviting me to join you. This has been amazing. Thank you very much, Kevin. It's really been truly wonderful discussion. Thank you for that.